We as cyclists are absolutely obsessed with altitude training. And if you've ever done it before, you know it's like downloading months of training in the space of about a week. So if you haven't tried it, you should. But let me explain the science anyway. Cycling at altitude means riding above 1,500 meters, but it is especially effective above 2,000 meters. Altitude has some distinct effects on the body because the higher up you go, the less air pressure there is. And this means there's less oxygen available in every breath. But your body is so good at adapting that it will adjust to normalize under these conditions. And when your body gets used to performing with less oxygen, when it gets back down to sea level, the body is super efficient with it and it overperforms. Frankly, it's like oxygen doping in a way. Let me explain more. So here's what happens to your body at altitude. First, there's the acute effects or the immediate effects. As there's less oxygen available at altitude, you'll get less oxygen into your bloodstream per breath. This means your muscles will fatigue much faster and you'll feel frankly weak. Your body will try to compensate by breathing faster and deeper to get more oxygen into the blood and your heart rate will increase to deliver more oxygen to the muscles. So in the short term, for the first few days at altitude at least, you'll feel rubbish. But your body will recognize that it actually needs to do something about this situation. Your kidneys will release erythropoietin, also known as EPO. Yes. You have heard of that, it is a banned substance, but we're talking about the naturally occurring kind here. I'll circle back to the banned kind later in the video. Anyway, your kidneys will produce EPO and this will stimulate production of more red blood cells so that you can carry more oxygen to your muscles. Your muscles will also become better at extracting and using those lower levels of oxygen. And you'll even get improved buffering of lactate. So your tolerance to hard efforts will increase so that when you're back at sea level with loads more oxygen than your body is used to, your performance will spike. So cycling at altitude makes you feel worse at first. That lower level of oxygen makes you feel fatigued and weaker, but you adapt and over time, then you come back down to sea level, you get home, you feel amazing. So let's circle back to EPO because I mentioned this earlier. Now EPO is what your kidneys will release to start stimulating red blood cell count. And this will increase your red blood cell count and then increase your ability to carry oxygen around your body. Now this is a naturally occurring thing. So why do we talk about it as a banned substance in say the Tour de France? Now this was a big controversy in the 90s right through to the early 2000s where EPO was effectively artificially created to treat people with low red blood cell count or people with you know problems like anemia so it was fake it was like a fake EPO which was created in an injection form and used to treat these patients. Now, cyclists obviously cottoned onto the fact that this might be beneficial to take their red blood cell count from a normal rate to an abnormally high rate. But EPO misuse comes with serious health risks. It can cause stroke, heart attacks. It can make your heart drop so low that when you go to sleep, it can just shut off and professional cyclists have lost their lives that way. So obviously the UCI had to start taking action against EPO. That doesn't mean that naturally occurring EPO is banned, just the synthetic kind. So training in altitude will initially make you feel terrible, but you'll start to adapt, you'll feel better by the end of the week. But the real magic happens one to three weeks after that event. That's when the real adaptation comes. Uh, I personally find that so much as a week in the Alps is enough to give me a huge boost in endurance and speed and recovery. I tend to find that I peak two weeks after the end of a holiday. And that's where altitude training comes in. It's a bit of a battle. You need to know you to know when you're going to peak. Now there are common training approaches. There's the live high, train low. 
Now this is the gold standard for athletes and basically you sleep at altitude at 2000 or 2500 meters, but you train at the lower altitudes. So you can still hit high power numbers when you go out on your ride, but you get the adaptation while you sleep. There's also scary things out there like artificial altitude training. This is effectively when you sleep in a altitude inducing tent that lowers the air pressure or lowers the air intake so that you get the effects of sleeping at altitude, but you're not actually at altitude. I don't know about you guys, but that seems a little scary to me, but they're out there. So what do you think guys? Is altitude training a good thing? Should it be banned? Should we not be doing it? Is it too much of a performance enhancing drug for cyclists to be using? Have you used it? Have you felt the boost? Is there any tips you want to share down in the comments below? I would love to hear from you. But for now, coffee, let's get out on the bike.